Hey everybody, uh, welcome to now my fourth video on the demo cheat sheet. Today I'm going to be showing you choices uh, and how they're exercised on a contract. Choices are actually a fairly important and common construct within demo programming. So what we mean by a choice essentially is that we have a contract and you probably saw this in my last video and then you have options that you can exercise on that contract. So choices come in one of two flavors. Uh, they come in consuming choices, which is generally by default, and non-consuming choices, which you have to add an additional uh, command in order to do. So for consuming choices, what a consuming choice means is that it essentially updates the existing contract. It archives the existing contract and replaces it with a new one, whereas a non-consuming choice um, will do something but not archive the current contract. The reason you generally want consuming choices for most of your workflow is because it makes sure that when you do your updates, uh, they don't go stale and you don't end up with conflicting data and conflicting states. Uh, and in most cases, you can kind of think of a consuming choice kind of like an asset update to say your SQL database where essentially you had some old data and then you went and replaced it with new data. And so in this case, you're not only replacing data, but you're actually doing you know, full on executions that replace the data. And that's why we generally keep choices that's consuming, but there's also the option of having non-consuming choices. For example, if you had one contract that was then used to later make other types of contracts, you would use a non-consuming choice. But I'll just briefly go over the structure and then I'll show you a real example from one of our uh, programs. So this is a choice. Uh, it's specified by using choice. And optionally, you can specify non-consuming before it if you want it to be non-consuming. If you want it to be consuming, you just leave this out. Uh, then you have the name, and you have its return type. In this case, the return type is just uh, pure nothing. And much like with templates, uh, your choices can specify certain arguments that they need to be called with. So for example, this one has a, a couple parties and an integer. Uh, then the choice basically specifies who can control it. So in this case, uh, both of these parties, party one and party two, are controllers to this choice. And so either one of these parties are capable of exercising this choice. And then what they can do is they can essentially assert that certain things are constant. So this is just obviously an example, but in this case, the choice is only going to do anything if i is equal to 42. Uh, then the choice can also create other contracts. Um, this would be a case where, you know, if you were had a consuming choice and you were replacing your existing contract, this is would be where you would actually return your your final your final uh, contract that that replaces the the previous one. And then you also have the ability to exercise other contracts and to return uh, whatever you're returning. In general, you actually wouldn't normally have return at the end of most of your choices. You'd probably have a create or a, a cre normally a create command at the end of your choice because these are do functions. So they work much the same way they would in something like Haskell where once whatever's at the end of your do function is basically what the do function is going to return. Uh, in this case, we're just returning nothing as an example. So that's why we have to specifically do that there. But for most cases, you wouldn't. And I'm actually going to now change over to an example. Uh, so this here is from, I believe, the, the Kanban boards, or Danban as we're calling it, uh, which is essentially a a clone of a Kanban board. Uh, I think it was adapted from another project, but built to use on top of a DAML backend. And this is basically DAML enforcing all the rules of that board. So in this case, we're gonna look at the add user choice uh, here. That's the name of our choice, add user. And what we're going to actually be returning is some board data. Uh, it doesn't matter what that is, but generally your choices are going to be returning a contract ID of some type and in this case, it's board data. Uh, then it accepts a couple parties, and they are the ones that can exercise this choice. Uh, and then what it can do is it can go and 
call this check access function, which is going to, it's not shown here, but it'll check to make sure that the admin specified is actually able to do what they should be able to do, which is add a user. And if they're not, it's going to not allow this choice to continue any further. Uh, then it's going to go, uh, we're going to go ahead and assert something and make sure that our user is not already existing. And if they are, we obviously don't want to create two of the same user. So that'll, that'll stop the execution as well. Uh, and then finally, if we've checked past those checks, you know, the admin is okay to make this update and the user doesn't already exist, we could go ahead and create the new user. And then as our final, uh, our, our final execution in this, in this uh, choice is we're going to go ahead and exercise some other contract and provide it with, and provide it with an update. And th this other contract's called update OBS and that'll do something else that's part of the, the workflow but this also shows uh, that essentially when you can, you can essentially execute one choice and then it will either, you know, just do one thing or you can have it do many, many things. And you can make sure that these things happen in the order that they're supposed to happen in and that, uh, you know, you're not ending up in a, in a case or having to specially code for a case where you're doing an update uh, before another part is changed. So this is all atomic. So if, for example, the update OBS contract that's being exercised right now uh, failed in some way, then this choice also wouldn't execute. And yeah, so that's basically a brief look at choices. Um, obviously, there's a lot to unpack here, but they are ultimately at their base very, very simple things that uh, should be fairly easy to grasp, at least at the lowercase, and then you have to, you know, start thinking about the implications of it. But yeah, it's a pretty typical construct in DAML. It's also having, you know, side effects in, in do loop, in uh, do statements is very common in other functional programming languages like Haskell. And yeah, so thank you very much for watching this, and I look forward to giving you the next update.